In the videos in this section of the course, we're going to start to take a closer look at the textures that you can use when creating your Octane material networks when rendering with Octane for Cinema 4D. So I have the Octane Node Editor here, which of course you can access by going to Materials, Octane Node Editor. And over here on the left side, you see all these buttons that allow you to create various nodes. So many of these are textures and they've been organized into categories. These categories are color coded and you can hide them or show them by clicking on the respective buttons up here. So of course, if you want detailed information on all the textures available in Octane for Cinema 4D, it's never a bad idea to go check out the documentation. You can go to docs.otoy.com and you'll find that there's a button here for all the various plugins that Octane supports. So here's the Cinema 4D button. If you click on this, it will open up the official documentation for Octane for Cinema 4D. And there's a whole section on textures down here, how to use them and the texture types. Lots of good information. There's also the help manual, which you can access by clicking on the help button here in the interface. And this will open up uh, kind of an alternate guide that also has lots of information on textures as well as best practices and uh, some other information. Well, we just want to do a quick overview in these videos to get you up and running quickly. So I have movies that are devoted to these different sections here and they cover some textures in more detail than others. Uh, so in this video, let's just talk about a few that are found here in this blue section. So I'm going to hide the other sections for the moment. So I do have a video that is devoted to talking about image textures in this section, as well as W coordinates, baking texture and OSL textures. So let's skip that. And let's just talk about uh, these three right here. So they're pretty straightforward. The RGB spectrum texture is simply put is just a color. So let's say I go in here and I'm going to plug this into the diffuse channel instead of that image texture right here. So if I had that plugged in, then I can use the color slider right here to change the color. And you can switch from RGB sliders to HSV if you prefer. So in this case, I can adjust hue, saturation, and value. Or you can switch to RGB and choose red, green, or blue. And that's pretty easy. Gaussian spectrum is kind of like another take on this. So if I open up the Gaussian spectrum, I'll connect this to the diffuse channel. In this case, rather than using the color picker, you can choose the wavelength of light and the width of that wavelength, as well as its power. So the power is gonna be like an overall brightness or darkness. The wavelength is gonna choose specifically the wavelength of light. And then you can choose the width to adjust the intensity. So that's another way to create color in Octane for Cinema 4D. And then of course we have the float texture, which is just a straight up value. So if I plug this into the diffuse, and then we just have a single slider that goes from zero to one, which you can interpret as being black to white. So this is handy if you just need to plug in a float value somewhere in the network, especially if your networks get more uh, complex. Let's reconnect our image texture here so we can get some nice color back to our friend's face. In addition to the tools in the node editor, you also find that in the materials menu, we have the Octane Texture Manager, which will give you information on all the textures in the scene and where they're currently stored, their size, and other uh, important information. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at working with image textures in Octane for Cinema 4D.